Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another edition of Adventures in Careerland. Hello, I'm your host, Adriano Magnifico. I'm the career lead at the Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center. That's an incredible space in the Louis Riel School Division where 13 programs exist. These are programs that students choose to better themselves in ways that the regular high school programs simply cannot do. There's programs like the one I'm currently playing with right now. The broadcast media program and we're in a we're not in a podcast media studio right now because um, of of circumstances beyond our control which we'll talk about a bit but we have this program which is one of the gems of the 13 you can get things like automotive technology baking broadcast media as i mentioned building trades culinary you can be an early childhood educator a hairstylist you can be an it person new media you name it you get a chance to better your skills in ways that usually center around some kind of weird curiosity you have. And so this podcast is really an interesting opportunity. It's called Adventures in Careerland for a reason. The word adventures is the operative word. The word adventure implies some kind of journey that someone goes on. When people choose this space, especially a high school student, they're walking off the beaten path. They're saying, I got to do something different. The regular school system works. I'm learning to read and write, but I got to do something different. I got to try something a little more hands-on. And so here we are in the broadcast media program. And every year, I am blessed to have with me some co-hosts and a collection of producers who help to put this on because that's what this program's about. It's about hands-on. It's about building programming. It's about applying your learning in spaces that really help you get a sense of your best self, what you're capable of, and it gives you a chance to gauge what possibilities may exist for you down the road. Because like it or not, we all know three things are going to happen in your life. You're going to leave school. You're going to have to talk about yourself to somebody who matters. Could be an employer, could be a scholarship adjudicator, could be to someone in an elevator. And you're going to look for work. Unless, of course, you marry rich. I tried. It didn't work. I just tried. I did my best. She, my wife is fantastic, but she's not rich. I'm grateful to have her. Don't, don't misinterpret. But those three things are going to happen for sure. So I think it's incumbent upon us, the educators of this world, to help students find their best selves, to help students find where the possibilities may exist, to help students find where outside of school walls in our surreal universe here, we can provide other classrooms. And so we're in a different classroom today. Normally, we're in the broadcast, the podcast media studio in the, broad, in the broadcast media space, but not today. We're in a dingy little classroom with a small setup with microphones and cords and the Star Trek board, the 1969 lit up board with little colored buttons on it. Spectacular. Why? Because they're redoing the roof and they're grinding and rolling and hitting and pounding. Not exactly the space for a podcast to exist. So we've moved to this space. It's quieter. It's better. But if you hear some weird noise, like somehow we're in a bomb shelter, it's because someone on the roof has decided to infiltrate our presence. I don't expect that to happen, but if it does, please accept our apologies in advance. Anyway, this is season six. How spectacular is that? Season six of the podcast. This is episode number one of season six and number 63 in the long train of podcasts, the continuum of podcasts where we find the stories of people who have navigated and looked outside of their cells to find the best space that works for them. And their stories are in inspiring. They're, they're breathtaking at times. They're, they're full of all kinds of decisions and proactive calls and mistakes and challenges that are really, really important for people to hear. They're important for youth to hear so that they understand they're not alone and that career development and that career pathing is not a simple process. It's not a linear, quick, I'm going to choose something, needle in a haystack process. It is 
a nonlinear, messy, all over the place process where you're going to meet people, find people, you're going to try experiences that don't work, some that do work, and you're going to continually move forward and reflect on those parts that stick to you. We talk about it in this program as collecting your dots. And it's important that we talk about it in this podcast all the time. But the collecting the dots is important. But collecting the dots means collecting all those experiences, stepping outside your comfort zones, trying as many things as you can, but also the key component connecting those dots, which means the reflection, reflecting about why it matters to you, why it's important to you, and what path do you want to take? What is it stimulated in you to move forward to the next space and opportunity in your life? But rejoicing onward, I want to introduce our new, we have a new group of co-hosts. We lost our co-host. I'm very sad we lost our podcast co-host, but we've had a few of them. I don't know if you recall my my seven or eight listeners out there. It was Lily and Isabella at the beginning. Then we moved to Akira and Zoe. And you may have been familiar with CJ and Andre, our last co-hosts. And they've all gone on to brighter and better things. They're all working. They're all maneuvering in great spaces. I'm so proud of what they've all done. And they've all been massive contributors to this podcast. And the growth that they showed was immeasurable the growth inside and out. And now we have a new team. Oh my gosh. We have two new people, two new co-hosts. And I'm looking at them right now and they have stars in their eyes. This is their great moment. It is Caitlin Middlestad. Caitlin, how are you? I'm good, how are you? That's a beautiful voice. Thanks. I want you to talk into the microphone though. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Caitlin, Caitlin, how are you? Why, I'm curious here, why do you Again, we, we decide who wants to do the podcast and Caitlin put her name forward. Why? Well, when we came in like May to like try everything out and I tried the podcast, uh, I thought CJ and Andre were really, really cool. And I was like, you know what? This is something that like I want to do because I'm shy and stuff. And I'm like, I feel like that would help me get more of a voice and like learn how to talk. And it seemed fun. And I was like, I want to do that. Oh, you talk beautifully. You know how to talk. You don't have to learn how to talk. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. And I like that you met CJ and Andre. Yeah. And you saw in them. What did you see in them? I don't. I just saw like, I don't know. When I saw them, I was like, I can do that. I want to do that. Like, I feel like it gave them a good opportunity, and it gave them like it was. It looked like a good experience, and they seemed like really confident in it, and like they just seemed so professional. And I was like. If I can do that, I want to do it. That was cool. Yeah. But but you know, they they were very nervous at the beginning. Yeah. And if, if you listen to some of the original pod, the beauty of this podcast is it's a learning experience for us all, right? Mm-hmm. Especially the new co-hosts. So listen to the previous ones. And I know you've listened to all of them. you yeah. listened to all the podcasts, haven't you? I listened to quite a few, yeah. Okay, that's a good answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right on. And of course, our other podcast, <laughs> Caden Seidler. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm very good. So, Caden, why would you choose? I went up to you. I saw you. I, I saw you in the in the room, and just I went to all, all classmates and just said, "Anybody interested in?" And I came to you. You weren't in the class when I actually talked about yeah. it. And I said, "You weren't in there. Are you interested in this?" Oh, you heard the big sound there. That was fantastic. That's what happens in a school. We hear the buzzes, the buzzers, the bells. Anyway, why did you? Uh, why are you interested in a podcast like this and being a part of this? Uh, well, to be honest, I. Didn't choose, but I'm glad you did pick me. Uh, I've always been... (laughs) That's a bad answer, okay? Just to be clear. (laughs) Uh, I'm grateful. But, I mean, I've always... One of the only podcasts I've ever watched was Joe Rogan's, and that stuff, pretty interesting, so... Well, you'll find this one's better than Joe Rogan's. Yeah, probably. I think you will. So you listen to Joe Rogan. What do you see in Joe Rogan? Uh, A lot of... A lot of... uh, A lot of myths, you know? Like, uh, talking to some crazy guys with theories, stuff like that. He talks about a... A lot of stuff going on in the world, so. So do you enjoy the occasional conspiracy theory? I do, yeah. You do? <laughs> I just do, no I problem. Do. So it's, no, the Joe Rogan experience is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's, great. that's a great podcast. It helps that he's a great comedian, too, and he's yeah. and he brings a lot of guests on. Yeah. But we're also going to bring guests on, okay? We're going to bring some pretty high-powered guests here, you two. So get ready for the experience of a lifetime here. Now, what's really going to be cool for me is I'm going to watch you grow as people. Grow as thinkers, grow as collaborators, grow as uh, just podcast hosts. And I remember CJ and Andre, quiet as mice at the beginning. 
and I was running the whole thing. And then boom, by the end, I had trouble getting a question in because of just how comfortable they became. So I take it to, I really take it to heart, Caitlin. I, I, I think you're making a good point. You need to practice things. You need to try out things. And I like that you said you're uncomfortable doing this maybe at the beginning. Yeah. And it's only through the practice that you're going to get better. How comfortable are you talking in front of a microphone like this? I'm better now. I never used to be. I was pretty shy all the time, but I'd say over the last couple of years, it's gotten better and I feel pretty good now. Okay. That's pretty cool. Now, as always, we like to interview someone. So the first couple of podcasts, we're going to interview our co-hosts. So our, I said seven or eight viewers. It might be eight or nine viewers, actually. Mm -hmm are going to get a very, like, you're looking at me seriously. Are you okay with it? That was kind of a joke, right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Uh, but we're looking at uh, interviewing each of you. And the first interviewer of this, well, let me ask you guys first. I want to ask both of you because we always like to start our podcast with a couple of comments about uh, what's going on in the world. So I'm looking at TikTok. I'm not a TikToker. TikTok, I don't know. I, I don't use it. And it occurs to me that some of these feeds are coming from TikTok. If I look at something, they come from everywhere, don't they? Some of these yeah. TikTok. So they could be in any, any space, right? Could be in Reddit, could be in Instagram, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it just has this ubiquitous feeding ability and quality, right? Yeah. Anyway, now that the U.S. government has banned TikTok in the U.S. government, and the Canadian government has banned some TikTok use, and Manitoba government has banned TikTok, and you guys are using it. Do you know why they banned it? Mm. Was it? like a distraction what i don't know i feel like it's I not a distraction a, no i feel like it was oh, of course it's it, it always will be right there's all kinds of research i'll share with you down the road but you know tiktok is out of all the social media probably 20 percent of all social media is tiktok use mm -hmm. it's the most ubiquitous social media piece in the world it's gaining market share like no other social media ever did including the facebook's of the world at an exponential rate but it's owned by China and government, it, when it's owned that way and you're putting all your data into there, that particular government may have access to all your information. Does that bother you? A, no. a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit or no? Does it bother you or are you just gonna continue? Would that affect your decision to use it at all? Because you guys use it, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you use it for, Caitlin? Entertainment. Pure, pure. That's right <laughs> yeah. on. That's uh, exactly entertainment. And I know people who can just flip through it yeah. for 45 minutes, an hour, just I flip through this thing. I do it for like four hours. Yeah. Four <laughs> hours. Okay. We got to get you some counseling, I think. That's yeah. why it's called is, TikTok. Is okay? The time. It's TikTok. The time. Yeah. It's how much you fritter away. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you watch it a lot? Or do you I flip did it a lot? lot. I mean, I still do, but not as much. But yeah, it's, it's for the funny, entertaining videos. A lot of them. A lot of them are the same because... TikTok does that where it knows that you like and keeps showing it up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you care that other people might be using your data or looking at your data? Not for it, funny videos, but... but or maybe, Yeah, but they check your... Yeah. Remember, when they get your data, they're checking your behaviors. They're checking yeah. what things appeal to you. When you look at even a funny video, there's something that appeals yeah. in that video to you that turns into a behavior that's being collected in a database mm -hmm. somewhere. Does that bother you? It's a little weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I don't mean uh, now. Is this now? Are you going to run home, Caitlin, and just so I'm never going on TikTok again? No. Okay. Of course not. Yeah, you <laughs> don't care. Definitely not. How about you? No. Mm, no. I, I'm okay. not on it. I'm not going on it. I mean, at points, I guess it's kind of uncomfortable to think about, but not enough to get me to stop. I guess so. And that's you know what? Even schools. I know the ATC here, the Arts and Technology Center, is has a TikTok account. Really? I think they're, they've got a TikTok account now. Or, or if they don't, they're about to get it. And mm -hmm. Because they see this as a way to connect to you folks, mm -hmm. right? And uh, to connect to Generation Z. Because you guys are both Generation Z. You get that, right? Yeah. You're digital yeah. natives. And I'm a baby boomer. I'm the end of the baby boom. And they also call me Generation Jones, which is the end of the baby boom um, at a certain time. My dad was a baby boomer, World War II. And of course, our eras determine what influences us, right? So uh, you guys probably had an impact, were impacted by COVID, I would think, a little bit, right? Yeah. How did COVID impact you guys in your life now? Because that's what a cohort does, like a Gen Z cohort. The alphas will be affected by it a lot. That's the next group coming up, right? Born after 2010 or something. 
And so they're, they're beginning to turn into teenagers. They lived through COVID at a very important time, as you guys have, right? So what impact has COVID had, COVID had on you, Caitlin? It's, I'm not sure exactly. I know it, I definitely had like a huge impact, but I don't know if I could say if it was positive or negative. It definitely like put me behind in school a lot. What, what did you fall behind in? Like everything, like having my <laughs> no, like honestly, because like online school wasn't my thing. I know for a lot of people it was like they loved it, but like like CJ, our last co-host, loved yeah. it. She just yeah. thought here's a chance for me to get my work done fast. Mm -hmm. She felt embarrassed sometimes from school that when she had so many questions and yeah. and she she felt odd asking all these questions, mm -hmm. right? And because the teachers just wanted to get through things and finish things, right? Yeah. And and. And so she thought, in this space, I can ask questions. I can stay longer. I can talk to people. I can, mm -hmm. in, on Teams, I can send messages to people and, and to my yeah. teachers and ask more questions and be more, more um, selective and directed about how I learn. Yeah. For me, it was the op It was like total opposite. Because I'm more of like a hands-on worker, and I like to like have it in paper and sit there with like a teacher if I need help. So like, it being an online school, it felt like it kind of like triggered my fight or flight. Like it felt like school was following me home. And like, I didn't want to open my laptop. I couldn't. So school became the shadow yeah. that you couldn't escape. <laughs> yeah. That's a great so metaphor. Eventually I just had to go into school and do my work there because I would not show up to online class. I didn't have motivation because oh, for wow. school I did. That's cool. Yeah. How about you? Okay. Yeah, kind of the same thing. I didn't like online. It was, I mean, some guys, you know, they wouldn't do their work and you, they, they, you have to be doing your stuff or you could just be sitting there not listening to the class and but I'd say the biggest impact probably not seeing friends I missed that part of going to school with everyone uh, not seeing them for like many months it was pretty it was tough but yeah I definitely prefer being in class in person well that your cohort Gen Z and the Alpha cohorts I think those are that's what I'm saying about a particular cohort right the baby boomer my dad was influenced by World War II right and about just what all that meant to him and how he survived that and how he worked through it covid may be one a touchstone moment in your lives as people growing up that will affect you in all kinds of ways down the road we'll see mm -hmm. we'll start waiting for that to play out but i suspect that's a big one for you yeah so cohorts are defined by what they do in their eras the time they were born uh what's happening in the world all that kind of stuff do you think the ukraine war is having an influence on you guys a little, I'd say, yeah. If you're how so? If you're from there, especially. But how about you as a person witnessing I, this? I am Ukrainian, but okay. not uh, from there. Do you have there. people who live there? No, we. Any relatives? Grandparents are from the, the land there, but uh, not not anyone that's currently there. Okay, how do they feel? Your, your grandparents? They must be sick inside. Yeah, I don't see them too much, but yeah, they definitely. I actually went to church with them around Christmas. We went to. It was a lot of talk about that. They're still. It's pretty hard for them, but. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, it's, it is unfortunate that there's a war going on, but I mean, it's got to be harder for people who had family out there. Yeah, you're not as near to it, eh? Yeah. Okay. How about you? Is, does the war affect you in any way? That war overseas? Personally, not really, but it did open my eyes a lot, especially oh, at first, because I was like, wow, I don't know, because I, I also have... I also have a friend. Good afternoon, everybody. Excuse the interruption, but How about uh, you that? may have seen the signs and the And that's uh, Mr. Curry, uh, our giant producer, doing an announcement knowing we have this podcast. How could he do this? I'm going to have to have a serious talk with him after this podcast. And he won't stop talking. I think he thinks he's on a stage somewhere in Madison Square Garden. I think he thinks he's singing a song somewhere. There he goes. <laughs> he had no idea. Anyway. Um, I do have a friend, and a lot of her family live there, and they're being affected, and they're like, I think some of them now are living, like staying with her in yes. America. Yes. But so that also opened my eyes that I saw like, yes. someone yes. close to me being affected by. That's pretty. Yeah. yeah it's pretty devastating, yeah. right? It is. It really is. I can see the pain in your face, honestly. <laughs> like it's 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 uh it's devastating stuff. I think those things as it continues to unfold. I think there may be more impact on 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 your cohort mm -hmm. and on cohorts 
who are con who connect to this in some way. And I think I don't think we can not connect with this, even if we don't have Ukrainian relatives mm -hmm. down there, right? Anyway, hey, want to interview someone here? It's going to be Caden this time, right? Ask a few questions. Now you're a Windsor Park boy. Yes, sir. What, we, what year did you graduate? Uh, 2022. 2022. So you're a post-secondary student yeah. here. So you've chosen, and you said to me, we chatted a bit, you said that you were thinking of this program back in Windsor Park. Yeah, back in grade 11. And you could have done it in grade 11, mm -hmm. but somehow you, you chose it later. So yeah. you could have paid how much for this program? Zero. Zero for it. But now what are you paying? Not a zero. Not it's a zero. Uh, a couple of grand, yeah. like two or three grand. So that's the advantage of when you a high school student coming to this program, right? Yeah. The cost is zero. When you leave it, they cut mm. it in half. You get one, you get one semester to to go at it. So that's what you're doing. Yeah. So if you waited a year, you would have paid the full price for this stuff. So, mm. uh, any regrets about starting it later? Should you have started it back I in high school? I regret it, but I mean, better better late than never, I guess. That's right. So why do you, why do you choose broadcast media? What is it about this that connects to you? Ah, uh, well. I like, you know, I listen to a lot of music, I watch, I mean, I don't watch TV, but I watch YouTube, uh, I don't know, it's a lot of, a lot of entertainment stuff that I've always been interested in, cameras, you know, films, that kind of stuff, it's always just how it all works and how it's, how to do it and how it's set up, it's pretty, I feel like it'd be good to know. Well, the skill set here is crazy, right? The, mm -hmm. Like, the amount of work you do with the Adobe Suite. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that will keep you in good stead no matter where you go into a business site. Mm -hmm. The fact that you can video edit at the highest level, and that you're working with at a professional level most of the time. Yeah. What's what's the most fun you've had so far in this program? Uh, probably playing with sound effects. We did this project. We made a story, and it was just just noises. So it was kind of fun. Uh, like recording. I never used to like my voice, but recording and it all together what's the sound of your fun. voice like do you like the sound of your i voice? do actually <laughs> you I do, do right? yeah. like you have this little kind of uh, deep little draw yeah. in your voice right yeah. it's kind of interesting <laughs> could be like it's 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 that uh indiana jones little yeah what are you talking about <laughs> come on get to that so i don't know is it is, caitlin movie star potential here what do you think oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> i like that okay great it's beautiful oh great <laughs> this is great now when i think of uh your time at, at Windsor Park. It's funny. Did you want to stay there because your buddies? Most people don't want to. One of the big reasons people don't come to the Arts and Tech Centers High School is they want to hang out with their buddies in yeah. high school. Forgetting that you're going to make a new set of buddies here mm -hmm. and you'll still have those buddies and you're going to graduate. Like it's yeah. it's a much more enhanced experience. But was that what held you back? You saw your buddies? Yeah, doing and this? even then I didn't even have, I had some friends from there here as well, so it would have been, would have been better. But I mean, yeah, I chose to stay with them, and I'm fine now with it. I mean, no, it's good. I yeah, mean, you're, yeah, I mean, you're, great. you're, you're still nice getting half there. off. I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking like a dad. You're still getting half the price off. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Just the whole thing of school. Do you remember, like the courses you took in school? I just talked to a kid in the hallway, and I said, "Hey, how's, how's the program going?" He's in the um, what is he in the? Uh, uh, oh, he's in the electrical program. And I said, "How's it going?" He, what's it going? He goes, um, "Hey, so you enjoying this?" And he goes, "I really like this." I said, "Well, why is that?" I'm, I'm not sitting in a classroom just taking notes here. Mm. I'm, I'm taking a few notes and then applying all the notes and we have yeah. to touch things and move things. Like you guys, Caitlin, I saw a picture of you in one of the social media feeds mm -hmm. where you were operating a camera at one of the high school championships. Yeah. Yeah, where were you? Uh, the MTS Iceplex. How cool is that? Yeah. And. Yes. You were running the camera, and you had the headphones on. You had the, mm -hmm. how, wh what was that experience like for you? I loved it. I thought it was so fun. Like, I, we've, I've streamed uh, basketball already before, uh, but I liked the hockey better. I don't know. It was a, more of an experience because there were more cameras and more people. So that was quite fun. It's fun. So those yeah. are the experiences I'm telling you, the hands-on pieces. I'm going to talk to you more about resumes. I come into your classes, talk about resumes, cover letters, that kind of stuff explaining those experiences in the context of how they're demonstrating skill mm -hmm. are going to be important ways you need to learn how to talk about yourself and, yeah. and and we're going to do that but you can't connect those dots without first collecting them so you're collecting some cool dots you guys is there one where you stepped outside the building where you thought this is a cool experience from what we uh that one was actually my first uh broadcasting trip the first one i went to we had some problems couldn't get it started but 
uh, it, but, it was it was good. But that's okay. So the, yeah, no, we still got to experience to set it up. We just didn't uh, start. You just couldn't get it going because yeah. something broke down, right? Yeah. Something. But that's where that's where a professional team can't allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. But a team learning how to do it has that little mm-hmm. bit of leeway, right? Yeah. Next time it can happen, right? So yeah. what was it like? You've been to one of those events too? Yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, a lot of setting up. It's definitely most of the job is setting up. And then yeah, the game was about an hour and a half, and you take two hours to get out of there, clean everything up. So it was and you, fun. And, and you'll be doing a lot of that. Yeah. And it's cool to have on your resume. You've worked the provincial championships mm-hmm. at this. You've done this provincial championship here. You've done the football championships at the stadium. That's kind of cool. You know what's cool? I watched uh, your teacher, Mr. Mr. Uh, Plainthink, um, showing you guys how to – how to um, how the wrap words. a cord. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen something so funny in my life. You figure, you figure, this is simple, right? Yeah. Like, what what did you think when he was showing you how to wrap the cables? I, I was getting like, co- like all cocky about it. I'm like, oh, that's going to be so easy. It it wasn't. Why wasn't it? Because, <laughs> at least with the, what is it? The figure eight wrapping. Yeah. Whatever, it's so you have to keep both sides even. And it's so difficult to yeah, like. It's such a long cord. Yeah, and you can like mess it up so easy, and when you do, then it like. And the cords are disasters, it. right? Like, yeah. And now you you learn something about the cord, how hard you got to pull it, how hard it takes to get the wind out of it, mm-hmm. all yeah. that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. workout. It, it's a total workout, and it took it took you a morning to get that straight yeah. and to get all your equipment. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. So he's showing you the easy, what looks what looks like easy stuff. You just have to know all that stuff. Yeah. And the creative stuff will come because you've got all the equipment working properly. His goal was to make sure you understand how to make the equipment work properly, right? Mm-hmm. So pretty cool stuff. So what kind of thing? What kind of courses did you take in school that connected with you? Uh, I'd say I, I I liked Woods. <laughs> We're talking about WPC. I, I did. Yeah, good I old WPC. Woods. Uh, that was a good one. It was all the hands-on metals. Woods hands-on work was fun. Pre-engineering there was one. I think I went up to grade ten. It was kind of the same thing. Uh, I took guitar. That was more of a, you know, like skill. I just wanted to get better at, and that was that's fun. I don't play too much anymore, but yeah, I'd say the, the hands-on classes where you're not sitting doing notes were definitely the the favorites. Well, and 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 there were some. You played some hockey a little bit, right? Yeah, you, never in school, you, but uh, never in school. You played for the Seals. My son played mm-hmm. for the Seals. Um, what kind of lessons do you get from the hockey experience? I'd say teamwork with, you know, you, you start off and don't really know any of these guys, and then by the end of the year, you're, like, all best friends and kind of teaches you did, how to. Did you see the great value of, did you play forward or defense? I did, yeah. Forward. When you played, did you play in a single line most of the time? Yeah, it was usually the same, like, three and guys. how long did it take for you to get to know each other? and to Not long, yeah. And then once you got the chemistry going, what message do you take out of that? Uh, I'd say, well... Working together, like when you get, like even if it's a guy you know don't really you might not like him at the beginning or something, and if you guys are good chemistry together and you can get the job done, like working together and say you're, you're a good line and you just work well together. I mean that's I think it teaches you to find different ways to get along with people and a little bit of social in there too. But yeah, I, so. I like it. I like it. There now you mentioned to me your mom was a big influence on you. Yeah. What 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 kind of mom uh, was she for you? Single mom. I mean, I I do see my dad, but it was about ninety percent with my mother. So now, now, did your mom do things like put little things in your lunchbox and things like that? Yeah, little yeah, she gave me some good lunches. Yeah, but did you, did you ever put little messages and things in your lunchbox? <laughs> yeah, things like that? yeah. She leaves. Uh, she actually still leaves notes on the. What on kind the of note does she? What's the best message you remember your mom leaving you? In a lunch? Yeah. <sighs> Probably. You can know, say maybe, maybe you can say maybe for going somewhere after school, you know, picking oh, me up. Oh, something boring. No. <laughs> like there wasn't like a little heart. Uh, like, maybe yeah, maybe a little heart. You, love kid. you, yeah, mm. sweetie, or you know, yeah. I guess so. I haven't seen one. In a do while, you remember so. a lot of those stuff? A little bit. Does Don't that worry. does that matter to you? You you think you're gonna look back on that stuff and say? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think so. Caitlin, what did, when you heard that, what did you think? Well, I thought it was cute. It's <laughs> I was cute. like, oh. Aww. <laughs> My wife did that for all the kids. There were always messages in their box around lunch. And always with a gummy bear or something like mm. that. Like it was all cool. The, and the kids, the reason I asked that, because I thought it was nothing, whatever. Anyway, the kids all remember that. All my mm. children remember those little messages that mom used to put in that box. And they can remember some of them word for word. 
that's amazing stuff. Like the, those little nice things that people do to you. What was the nicest thing someone's done to you lately? Uh, that was small and insignificant, hmm. but it meant a lot to you. Maybe, maybe just a compliment on a when you're on your fit. I don't know. But, uh, That's okay. Yeah, Caitlin, know. can you think of something like that? Um, hmm. Where it kind of made your day. Like, like there's times when um, my wife does this to me. Even like I'm one of her. I guess I'm one of her boys because uh, <laughs> we're three boys, right? And me. Um, if I'll, I'll open my briefcase or something. Whenever I go away, and I always forget about it. I went to Ottawa for a trip to, uh, for a career development conference in January. And um, I open my briefcase or my bag, and there are, I love jujubes, a little pack okay. of jujubes with a note. She does that. She sneaks them in and stuff like that. I always remember that. That's, my wife is the, the gifter of all time the small little and it's not about the big gift it's the little small thing that matters mm -hmm. sometimes to me and i remember them like crazy I, I totally get what my kids are saying i thought it was dumb at the beginning like as a whatever i'm a sports guy whatever and i just thought oh my gosh she's teaching me how to be a great person my wife did that mm -hmm. and always does that she's she's kind of amazing so mom mom's always been there yeah for you. Yeah, she's always, you know, tried her best, like stuff like that, being nice. She's always helping people. She, she's a hairdresser. She cuts my hair. Never paid for a haircut before, so. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Oh, my dad. Lucky. My dad used to cut my hair, but I didn't have the advantage of him being an actual hair oh, stylist. He just did it. Yeah, he used to. <laughs> I used to run out of that garage sometime, blood, <laughs> screaming, shunned by man and beast alike because of the haircut he gave you. Just, he could have used a bowl, didn't you? Just a crazy man, my dad. I don't know. Anyway. He's always trying to save money, my dad. Hey, uh, I'm giving a big kiss to my dad up in the sky. Same with my mom. Big kiss to her. Hey, so your dad worked, it's funny, like I find that cool. Your dad worked on the rigs, you said, in Alberta. Yeah. That's big time work. Yeah. So when you, and when you saw your dad, um, that kind of work kind of shapes a mentality, doesn't mm -hmm. it? What was your dad like? He was lonely, definitely really, really lonely. Uh, you think? You think so? Yeah, I mean, you know, he had his, guys out there that he talked to but it was it was just work sleep work sleep and then but you get paid like crazy yeah then, right? exactly. like some guys i know a buddy of mine named dave when i was growing up when he was he didn't finish high school and went out to the rigs like in the 80s and uh he came back like 20 years later had so much money it was frightening like you make you make a lot of money up there because they house you take care of you all that yeah. kind of stuff right yeah you're not doing anything else but but you do nothing but yeah but oil rigs which yeah. is hard back breaking work too yeah so you have to decide in your life is that something you want to do right and, and, and if you're open to that that's a young man's game yeah i think you can't be doing that at 60 years old oh yeah but at 20 years old they love having you guys at 20 years old on on work sites because yeah. you can you can carry all the shingles up to the roof yeah right that kind of stuff anyway so what did you get like think about your dad what think of what lesson he kind of gave you in life or, or the thought about it. Let's see. Oh, well, he's a hard worker. Yeah, for uh, sure. That's yeah, that's hard work, I mean, man. I've thought about doing that type of thing, what it would take to, you know, it'd be a big change for, I think he did it for about three years. He did it before, but then went back to it after a bit. And yeah, I, he got, he missed seeing, you know, my, me and my sister. So yeah, he definitely liked the money, but he wanted something more where he's around. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a thought to do that before, like someone young. When you're young, right? Yeah. That's kind of cool. So the influences, any other influences in your life, like people who influenced you and made you think about, you know, what uh, people mm. who made you think about, you ever thought about this? Anyone ever tap you on the shoulder? I wrote an article once about tapping on the, how, the importance of the tap on the shoulder. Mm. Someone going, have you ever thought of this? Has anyone ever done that for you? Uh, man, my, my grandpa, he's... That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good guy. He's, he used to play. He actually, cool story, he's in the uh, Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame, I think it is. He was a pretty good pitcher. Oh, cool. Almost made it to the, the the pros. The show? He almost did. Made it to the show. The, oh what I heard gosh. was my grandma didn't want him to go, something oh, like that. that. I don't know. Oh, I don't know the story. Geez. But my grandpa was very. His wife held him back? <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know, what? my father-in-law had a chance. He was drafted by the Boston Bruins oh. in the 16 league. You had to be pretty good in those days. There's uh, only six teams. Yeah. 
but he didn't. He had to go to the training camp in U.S. Minister out in B.C. He mm-hmm. didn't want to leave his. Uh, wife. In those yeah. days, he didn't get paid, right? Yeah. Like he got paid, like he had to almost have a second job half the time, because he was he loved his wife so much. Yeah. Didn't yeah. want to do it. He was a very humble guy. Yeah, it's awesome. never got mad. That's yeah. a great story. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So, what do you get out of that story? Moving forward, out of the baseball. Uh, just. Just, say, just your grandpa. He tapped you on the shoulder, right? Yeah. He, what did he remind you about? Well, usually... Just he he must tell you simple. some great stories. Oh, Doesn't he, he have some great stories did. about being in a camp, baseball camp? and <laughs> What players... Yeah, did he, he ever run into some cool players and stuff like that? Not, that you not don't anyone even know, famous, but, but just random guys that he'd know from out in the country. He, he's from Giroux, so he was from always playing out there. Um, then never, never a wealthy man. You know, he's just... He was very poor when he grew up, but uh, he learned to like the simple things. So, yeah. Right on. Hey, so l- l- let me tell you, how how interesting is this for you now to be out of Windsor Park? If you were to go back there in this program right now, knowing what you know so far, you've accumulated new information since high school. Your perceptions are beginning to change a bit. Mm-hmm. Fair to say? Yeah. Okay. You're, you're talking to a grade 11 class. What advice would you give them? I would say if you're, if you feel like you are interested in something and that you would like to do it, go for it. Don't be too scared of like what else you have to do to over like get into it. That's fascinating what you're saying, being scared. Do you think high, a lot of high school students are scared? Yeah, I was very scared. What are you scared of? What are you guys scared of? It's gotten better now, I'd say it was, yeah. But in high school, let's go back to the high school space. Very socially awkward, kind of. I mean, I was, uh, and you know, didn't like pictures, seeing pictures of myself, anything like that. It was very... Now, is that a COVID thing too? Did COVID exacerbate some of that? Because if, if, if you're not interacting with people and all you're doing is swiping on phones, yeah. I'd say is that kind of messing you up a bit? I think so. What, what, once we came back to school... And COVID, you had all the masks on, everything. And once everything kind of went back to normal, I feel like everyone kind of could tell it was a different feeling, you know, just of how, I don't know, it, it was it was different. So what are people afraid of in high school? Because I get this all the time. I do, I, I do f- workshops and I ask them, what are you afraid of? I may come into your space and do it too. And you can't believe the stuff I got. I have hundreds, hundreds of different fears. I've never seen anything like it from in the last four or five years where I've gone into every high school in this division. The fears are off the chart. What's the biggest fear you have? Do you, what do you I'd worry say, about mostly? I'd say what people think of me, you know, when they, like if they see you. Oh, I, th- that, I, I think you're a good guy, Kate. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That's good. C- Caitlin, what's your biggest fear? I think mine's kind of similar to Caden's, just like the judgment from people around me or like people's expectations like my teachers or something maybe oh that's okay that's yeah. okay are you afraid of me no <laughs> but <laughs> that wasn't a great <laughs> no, <true>. no <laughs> like i feel like more in the other schools because like in this subject i'm more confident in it but like in the like mandatory classes in high school i'm not always the most confident so i was kind of that's, that's yeah. an interesting point. That's really smart. Both of you, this is really astute because in this space, do they actually work? In the ATC, do they actually work to alleviate some of your fear? Yeah. Because, yeah, I think so. be, because yeah. you have to do it yourself yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's not a collection of notes that a mm-hmm. teacher's given you that you kind of have to regurgitate or, or, or give back in some odd way through mm-hmm. a test or through a project. Mm-hmm. Interesting, eh? Yeah. Pretty interesting. So you tell kids just to follow, or, or sorry, not to follow, but to follow their kind of interest yeah, that they can figure out. Yeah, not to hold that. Cause Does school spend time trying to help you figure out what your interests and curiosities are? Or are you just kind of yeah. consuming these courses? I'd say kind of it depends. I mean, at my school, they'll, they'll throw some things at you. And if, if you're a kid that does like that, then, oh, that's good. But if, if you kind of didn't find anything, you're kind of just left on, you know, going with nothing, with nothing to prepare you really. But, um, that, like for me, I was, I, I knew I would have, I was interested in broadcast media, but I was a little worried just for the, you know, being on camera. 
and all, all this self-conscious stuff. That's what uh, made me not want to go, so I'd say to ignore that. Okay. Uh, last question for you before we get to the quick cues. Um, what do you think so far has been a really important decision you've made in your life? Um, definitely coming to ATC. Good. And starting broadcast media. That was definitely highlight of my year. And, uh, That's fantastic. This yeah. is a great dot for you, mm -hmm. Caden. I really believe it is. And for you too, Caitlin, this is a great dot for you to help you reflect, to gauge your skills, to think about you know, what I'm good at and, and what I hope to try to get good at. Because you're looking at things saying, do you look at a few things and say, I want to do that now? I want to get good at that? Yeah. You don't do that in school. Mm -hmm. I want to get better at history. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you just don't do that. So this is great. That's a great... That's a great decision you've, uh, that you've made, and, I'm, and, and it's going to impact you. I look forward to you guys down the road. You're going to go on internships. You're going to go out. You're going to be running with that camera in the sleet and the rain and the snow. I'm excited, and I've been out in the stadium watching that. It's hilarious in the best way that you guys persevere, and you have a great story to tell. You're going to have a great story to tell when you finish this program. I love it. Yeah. Anyway, hey, it's time for something we call, and it's going to be a special edition. It's our first season one, episode one, Quick Cues. Now, Caden, I'm going to turn this over to Caitlin. She's going to explain what it is, and she's going to tell you what you have to do. Um, so Quick Cues, basically a bunch of like rapid fire questions, and you just got to answer them as fast as you can. If you don't have an answer, just say skip, and we'll go on to the next one. Alrighty. Brilliant. I guess. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Orange juice or apple juice? Apple juice. Cold or warm pillow? Cold. Hard shell or soft shell tacos? Hard. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Starbucks or Tim Hortons? Tim's. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Super speed or super strength? Speed. Wash or dry dishes? Dry. Hot dog sure. or burger? Burger. Favorite music genre? Hip hop. Dogs yeah. or cats? Dogs. Favorite social media? Uh, Instagram. DC yeah. or Marvel? Marvel. Cow's milk or almond milk? Cow's milk. Yeah. And last but not least, what is your favorite podcast? Ventures in uh, Careerland. Oh. <laughs> Got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> woo, yeah. woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Caitlin, you have to cheer. <laughs> yeah. Happily. That's very good. Yeah, okay. That's good. So that was just the quick cues are just our quick little way to get a little more information, mm -hmm. quick little ideas about who you are, what you are, what you value, what's important, you blah, blah, blah. Anyway, hey, that was a lot of fun. What did you think of this first podcast, you two? It was fun. Uh, it's uh, going easier than I thought it would go. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I it, think it's going to be fun. And it'll get easier and easier yeah. because I can see you're a uh, you're, you're comfortable group to work with here. It's going to be very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. How would you feel, Caitlin? It was fun. I was nervous at first, but... How do you feel now? Good. It just takes time, right? Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. This is good. You know what? And uh, that's going to be the end of our podcast today. I want to thank our producing team. Our producing team out in the, uh, in the background. You don't see them, but they're really watching the dials, those colorful dials back there in the uh, production room or in our little keyboard here. So, Phoenix, thanks very much. Phoenix Whitman and Geneva, who's getting her tonsils out. So we're waiting for Geneva to come back uh, so she can participate. And we wish her well as she convalesces. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it for Season 6, Episode 1 of Adventures in Careerland. <laughs>